uh, in the last video we have uh, discussed uh, what is aggregate demand uh, what is aggregate demand curve and how aggregate demand curve is derived uh, today uh, the topic of discussion is aggregate supply curve uh, how aggregate supply curve is derived now so there is a derivation of aggregate supply curve before this let us uh, know uh, what is aggregate supply aggregate aggregate um, supply aggregate supply is the total total amount of amount of goods that that all the farms in an economy economy taken together taken together plans to supply at an at a particular price price level so aggregate uh, aggregate supply is the total amount of goods uh, that all the farms in an economy taken together plans to supply at a particular price level now what is aggregate supply curve aggregate the aggregate supply curve shows the uh, amount of output amount of output farms plan to plan to supply at each level of price that means uh, aggregate supply curve uh, establishes the relationship between price and output that is mean different price what will be the amount of uh, mm, supply in a macroeconomic sense now the question is how aggregate supply curve is derived uh, process of derivation of aggregate supply supply curve involves two markets one market is factor market or we can say it's labor market okay labor market and another market is uh, product market product or commodity market okay farms purchases inputs a farm purchase inputs from factory market say labor labor is purchased from this market then it is processed into it is processed into output okay and which is again sold in the into uh, in the product market output is sold in the product market now uh, now the um, now we'll start from the labor market uh, we will we'll know how aggregate supply curve is derived so first of all starting from the labor market labor market so 
so in this axis we measure suppose we generate okay and along this axis we measure the number of laborers okay laborers okay. we'll say this is n now uh, this this curve is known as a marginal productivity marginal productivity curve of labor marginal productivity of labor npn into p this is called demand curve of labor this curve slopes downward this is the demand curve of labor slopes downward see uh, demand for labor see if we if we write this as dn demand for labor curve is a function of what uh, function of real wage if real wage is more if real wage is more then demand for labor will fall if real wage is less then demand for labor will increase means when real wage increases demand for labor decreases okay there is an inverse relationship between this with this two now the equilibrium actually takes place equilibrium employment of labor okay the equilibrium demand takes place where uh, w by p is equal to marginal productivity of labor okay marginal product what is this this is known as marginal productivity of labor that means change in the total total production change in the total production due to change in one unit of extra labor employed okay when we employ any extra unit of labor then what will be the change in the total production that is called marginal productivity of labor suppose we have uh, you know uh, suppose there are um, uh, 10 units of labor em employed uh, okay and this total production is 100 now if we employ 11th unit of labor and if total production reaches to 110 that means that 10 units extra 10 units is the marginal productivity of labor okay now this is this is w by p is the real wage rate okay now uh, if uh, if w by p w by p that means real wage is uh, less than marginal productivity of labor that means it is profitable for farm to go on employing more and more labor because just you see wage is less than the marginal product of labor that means whenever we are employing the extra units of labor what it is contributing to the total output what it is contributing to the total output is actually more than the cost of employing an additional unit of labor that is why it is profitable and for the farm to go on increasing employment okay because the profit is the main objective of farms now this is in a real uh, wage uh, uh, form we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, change it in the uh, into where we can convert it to the nominal wage rate um, by this see uh, w by p is equal to mpn okay from this what we can write or w equal to mpn into p so this is what mpn into p that is marginal productivity of labor into price it is also known as value of the marginal product there is physical marginal product multiplied by price that is called value of the marginal product this is also demand curve of labor the demand for labor so equilibrium employment will take place farms will employ labor till this point w is equal to mar mpn into p okay that means uh, that means if w is w is uh, less than mp and p that means it is profitable farm for farm to increase labor employment okay and it will go on employing till this point okay now uh, in this analysis we will assume that our w is fixed that is nominal wage is fixed so this is suppose nominal wage is this w bar it is nominal wage is fixed so at this nominal wage total uh, amount of labor demand will be this because here this is the equilibrium employment okay this much of uh, labor will be employed in the economy okay o n zero clear now uh, now another things we will assume there that is marginal productivity of labor that is marginal productivity of labor m p n is a constant 
okay now if price changes if price changes then this may change marginal product means value of the marginal product will change okay now now from the uh, product market suppose price has increased in the product market suppose price has increased so when price increased suppose in the product market what happens the demand increases suppose who suddenly demand in increases so when demand is increased then uh, uh, the given supply the price market price will increase so when price is increased then mpn suppose this is the initial price p not okay then when price is increased then total value of the marginal product will increase that means demand for labor will increase that is there will be a shift in demand curve of labor that is mpn that is it is constant you see mpn marginal productivity is constant only change is taking place in price from p0 to say p1 has because price has increased the profitability of firms has increased because wage is constant price has increased wage is constant price has increased that makes a shift in marginal productivity uh, productivity curve of labor or demand curve of labor so when now see this in this wage uh, existing wage marginal productivity of labor has increased so this will cause an extra demand for labor firms will increase labor employment from n0 to, to n1 okay now uh, related to this uh, our production function curve is is suppose that is our production say y o and n is the labor so this is our production function curve total production curve total product curve so y is function of so n that means total product total product or total production is the functions of uh, labor labor employed numbers of uh, laborers are employed it is uh, it is uh, it is showing see what what happens suppose when n not is labor is employed n not labor is employed employed total production in the economy will be say why not okay when n1 units of labor is employed then total productions will increase to y1 okay now if there is further increase in uh, demand in the product market that will cause a more rise in the uh, demand for labor and this marginal product of labor demand curve of labor will shift up say mp n to p2 okay this will cause a further rise in demand for labor from n1 to n2 okay so here also you see productivity for the total production will also rise from y1 to y2 now we can see that when price rises from p0 to p1 okay when price rises it results what shift in demand curve of labor and equilibrium employment in the economy uh, labor employment increases and when labor employment increases as because output is function of labor then output also increases that means when price increases we can say that when price increases output will increase now we will establish the relationship between price and income in one diagram so we will plot all this price in this axis so this is a p not this is a p1 and this is a p2 now in this axis this axis output now will be transmitted to in this axis so we will put output in this will measure output in this axis so when p0 is the price then employment is n0 and when em employment is n0 then output is y0 we will put this y0 here then when p1 is the price employment is n1 and output is y1 okay suppose this is y1 now when uh, price is p2 employment is n2 and when employment is uh, n2 n2 output is y2 so output is y2 now we have to join all these points so the combinations the first combinations the pair of price and income then second then third 
Now by joining all these three and extending this, we will get aggregate supply curve. Now what, what this aggregate supply curve shows? This is the shows this different combinations of price and output. Means when price increases, aggregate supply in the economy increases. When price increases, aggregate supply in the economy increases.